yes, the Philippines has changed me. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't used to standing in front of a crowd of my friends and singing my heart out, right? But karaoke is a big part of Filipino culture. And once I embraced that and saw how great it is and how good it feels to just get it out, even though you're not even a good singer, just ah, 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 that just felt good right there. You see, damn, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because it's like the Philippines really changed the way I think. It really changed me. Like, you know, I was already kind of an adventurous guy or whatever, but, you know, I wasn't ready for all the things that the Philippines had to offer. The Philippines is different. Being six foot tall, hopping on a jeepney, I mean, ain't no seat belts. All you can do is hold that bar and hold on for dear life, you hear me? <laughs> I mean, just stuff like that, simple stuff that the Kababayan, they're used to it, right? But me, you know, I got on the jeepney, I'm thinking I'm in a Mario Kart or something. I'm like, <laughs> the way it's just so square and you know what I'm saying? The way those drivers just weave in and out of traffic. They're so used to driving, they don't even care no more, man. They just roll. And I'm up there like this, whoa, whoa, whoa. And everybody's just looking at me like, dude, are you okay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it really opened my mind that things are different, man, in different places. Like, and you really gotta get used to this, right? Um, at the same time, you know, it opened my mind to trying new things or whatever. First time I tried balut, oh my God, forget about it. I was like, damn, dude, this tastes like chalk, right? But after a while, I started trying it a little more. I started putting vinegar on there. Yeah, I'm talking about the sucarat. Sucarat, spicy vinegar, damn, la mica, ayo. Or for my people that Luzon, masarap, right? So it started opening my mind. I'm like, yo, this is actually good. Now, uh, shoot, I'm a balloon master. I cracked that shell open so fast, man. Shoot, you would think I'm a predator in the daggone wild. Pop! <laughs> Goes the weasel. <laughs> Damn! Good stuff, right? It really opened my mind because, you know, at first, I'm thinking uh, it's an actual embryo in here. Like, it's not just a yolk. We're going we, 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 we to eat the head, the beak, the eyes, everything. Everything? Everything, right? And now, to me, it's become like a delicacy. In the elegant accent, a delicacy. How you say it? A delicacy. 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 <laughs> That's another thing, too. It seems that living in the Philippines has changed even my accent. And, I, and, and, and I'll say, namely, living in Iligan. It's changed my accent, you know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, I just said Iligan, right? That's how an American would say it. But in Iligan, they say Iligan. You hear that? You hear that I? Iligan, right? When they say automatically, they say automatically, right? American English is not the first language here. So, as an American living here, if you really do immerse yourself in the culture, you find yourself, Diva, you see like I just said Diva, <laughs> you find yourself kind of taking on the accent of where you're living at. Maybe if I was living in Luzon, I would, you know, have a, a whole different accent. Just like what I just said right now, right? Usually, before I was living in the Philippines, I would have said, where you're living at? See how fast we talk? Where you're living at? <laughs> like, but since I've been here, I, when I say where you're living at, I say where you're living at, where you're living at. Da -da 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 -da. It's, it's like a whole different tone. You understand what I'm saying? And um, I believe that's the Iliganan thing, but it's changed me. It's changed even the way I talk, all the way down to the way I walk. When I was in America, you gotta walk brisk. You looking around, don't fuck with me, don't fuck who you is, right? I can chill here, man. I don't have to be looking behind my shoulder every five minutes, wondering if somebody gonna jack me for what I have. 
I can walk and just chill. My walk now is like, nah. Queenie still says that I walk like a bully, but that look at my arms, guys. <laughs> and and when I walk, my arms kind of come out. You guys saw me on the videos or whatever. I kind of walk, kind of like a tough guy, but I've been in the Marine Corps all my life. We had to walk with confidence, Diba. We had to walk with a purpose. So when I walk, she's not used to seeing men walk like that. So she's like, why are your arms out? I'm like, I'm like, okay, so should I put my arms like this? Okay, I walk like this. Okay, okay, is this better? She's like, no, just walk the regular way. <laughs> because she saw that it was unnatural for me to just put my hands to my side and just try to walk like that. You know what I'm saying? That's really how I walk. But if she would have seen me in America, how I walked, oh yeah, I was walking like a bully. I was walking like, don't with me. Don't play with me. And that's the mentality when you're in America, because America is dog eat dog. You got to be tough. You got to be aggressive. You got to be assertive, right? A little bit of that still comes out in my walk, and I don't even mean for it to. That's why a lot of times when Filipino people first see me or first meet me, you know, I get that noise. They go, hello, hello, like that. <laughs> like, you know, here comes some kind of villain. And somehow I have managed a way to let them know, yeah, I'm a giant, but I want to be a gentle giant. I want to be a loving giant. I want to be, you know, someone who learns the culture, learns the language. This is the reason why I felt like it was most pertinent upon me out of anybody else that comes here to learn the language and the culture. Because when you see me, I do look kind of menacing. Look at my freaking arms, man. I'm bald headed, I'm a big guy, I'm six foot one, I st my stature stands over most people here, right? And when I'm walking down the street, I got a straight face, just like everybody else, right? But my straight face is more like, you know what I'm saying? And they're like, oh shit, what's about to happen now? Cause I mean, what what is the alternative? Should I just walk around smiling? Hi guys, I'm smiling so that you won't be scared. No, I'm not gonna do that, right? So instead of doing that, what I do is I learn the culture, I learn the language. I come up to them, I come up to them and say, "Como está, po? Ah." Oh man, uh, my ayong buntag man, or you know, uh, whatever, whatever the greeting might be, I greet them in their language, right? The other day, I was at the car wash, and I wasn't even thinking about it, right? I just came up to because we got a car wash here in Illigan where you can get food, milkshakes, and everything like that. And I went up to the counter, right, while I was waiting on my car to get washed, and I just say, uh, ma'am, excuse me, my young hapon, uh, ma'am, unsan and classy uh, milkshakes, right? What I just said was, what types of milkshakes do you have? And basically in English, but this is in the Bisaya dialect. I said, unsan and classy nga milkshake, ma'am, like that. And the lady next to me, an older lady, right, an elderly lady, you know, um, she's, Bisaya? Like that. It's like it changed her whole outlook on me. Cause when I walked up before, I could immediately see a little bit of tenseness, you know, going to her, you know what I'm saying? But I'm used to that. I didn't pay it any mind, right? And then just, once another class, you can have milkshake, ma'am. Oh, oh, siggy, siggy, ah, uh, isaka watermelon, palihog. Ah, uh, salamat. Bisaya? Oh, oh, ma'am, gamay lang, learning, learning ba? She's just like, and, and then the rest of the time while I'm sitting there waiting on my stuff, she's just looking at me like, what? Because I took the time. I took the time to learn. And it's changing me for the better. Yes, the Philippines has changed me. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't used to standing in front of a crowd of my friends and singing my heart out, right? But karaoke is a big part of Filipino culture. And once I embraced that and saw how great it is and how good it feels to just get it out, even though you're not even a good singer, just ah, 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 that just felt good right there. You see, damn, you know what I'm saying? 
it feels good to just let your heart pour out in song, in melody. You understand? Now I see why they like, you know, karaoke so much. I understand it. Before, when I first came here, I looked at them like they was crazy. Like, what they singing for? He can't sing. She can't sing. Why is she singing? But that, my friend, is not the point. Whether you can sing, whether you're a professional freaking singer or not, that's not the point of why the Kababayan love karaoke. The point is that it feels good. Especially if you got you a cold red horse. It feels real good. <laughs> Next! <laughs> Let's get serious, though. Some serious ways that the Philippines has changed me and Filipino culture has changed me. I learned to accept imperfection, right? What do I mean by that? The Philippines still has a lot to work on. It's a developing country. I refuse to call it a third world country. It's a developing country, right? So they still have a lot to work on. So they have some imperfections, right? And when I first came here, it's, why is this like that? Why is this like that? Why is this, you know, I'm still going off of this American mind frame. And furthermore, a military mind frame, because I'm not just an American. I'm a military American. So, you know, in our life, perfection means life or death, right? You clean your weapon a certain way. You load your weapon a certain way. You set up your campsite a certain way. When you leave the campsite, there's nothing on the ground. The enemy doesn't even know you were there. This is how Marines think, right? So perfection, Diba, was something that, you know, kept me alive for so many years. Doing things perfect or as close to perfect as possible. When you come to the Philippines, you realize that some places, you know, have a lot of imperfections. And if you're not open-minded, you're gonna complain, you're gonna be pissed, which that was me the first few months, I'll admit. But I learned that, you, that, that guess what? This country is developing and it's building. They're building towards perfection, one step at a time. When I first came here, we didn't have no 5G um you know internet we got fiber now baby i'm talking to you live fiber optic you understand me crisp and clear right that's just in the last five years you understand what i'm saying so what i'm saying is and that's just one example but what i'm saying is this country is working on it there are people that you don't understand are behind the scenes working every day to bring this country up. If it is, a, if you do want to consider it a third world country, to bring it up to a second world country, bring it up to a first world country. And I'm going to be right here helping along the way, all the way to the top, guys, all the way to the top. You know, Mabuhay, Philippines, Diba. <laughs> My growth here has been a journey, guys. You don't just spend 39 years in one place, in one particular, you know, mind frame and stuff, and then boom, you just go to a different place and you change automatically. Nah, man, I'm still learning. I'm still changing. I'm still developing, diba, into a black Pinoy. You understand, right? And you know, it's, like I said, it's really a journey, man, and me, I love learning from doing. I love learning from experience, diba? And so, if you have that type of mind frame, the Philippines is the best place for you to go. I recommend all expats, go to the Philippines, man. I mean, I know there's a lot of other places that expats like to go, but the Philippines has been life-changing for me. As I told you guys before, the Philippines is my peace. Before I came here, I didn't have peace. My life was chaos. Yeah, this life is very simple. If you look at the thumbnail, it has shown me walking out of an American city, walking into a Filipino province. Does the Filipino province look way simpler than the American city? Yes, it does. 
But also, when you look in the background, you see a beautiful waterfall. Also, when you're chilling there, the sounds that you hear, you hear the roosters, you hear the birds, you hear the water, right? Your heart starts to calm down, dude. And you understand you ain't gotta walk around with your fist balled up. Cause I had to. I'm telling y'all where I, I'm telling y'all where I came from. All I'm saying is this place has been my peace. And I don't never wanna leave, guys. You know, the way the Philippines has changed me is that it's taught me how to enjoy simplicity, simple things, right? As I told you in that one video, right, when we have brownouts and stuff like that, you know, I mean, we, we put on our candles. I got a couple of downloaded cool videos that I can watch that are already on my phone and, you know, we make do. But as I told you, when snap, when that current comes back on, you hear the whole neighborhood cheer. They're cheering because the current came back on. That You know how simple that is, dude? You know, in America, you never have brownouts. So you get spoiled. You get used to it. You get accustomed to it. And if there's a brownout, you're calling, you're calling the, uh, the power company, everything. You know, hey, what's going on? You're, you're, you're complaining. You're going crazy, right? But here, they're used to it. And then they rejoice when it comes back. It's just something simple, right? The kids make up their own games. They don't have, a, a lot of the children here don't have a lot of expensive toys. They make up their own games. They play in the rain, like they're at a water park. I love the way the Kababayan think, you know? And listen, it's a simple life, but as I said, it's building and it's getting better and better and better. But I hope that the Kababayan always keep that appreciation by for simple things. That's why a lot of people tell me, never don't well, if you want her to keep appreciation for simple things, don't bring your Filipina to America because she'll get spoiled, she'll get spoiled rotten. But I don't believe that. I believe it's all in the heart. You can't just put that on all Filipinas. If you take them to America, they're gonna be spoiled and they're gonna be, they're gonna be, you know, you know, they're not gonna be the same. Of course it's gonna change them a little bit, but depending on how their spirit is and depending on how their heart is, they're not gonna change for the worst. That's what I'm hoping for the Filipino people because this country is constantly changing. It's constantly developing. I still want the Filipino people to keep that good, simplistic, humble, happy, you know, non-snobbish mind frame. Because these are the things that I had to reverse in my mind frame to be a better person, Diba. Oh, okay, did y'all just hear that rooster? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. Like, you hear everything here, dude. Hey, listen, guys, much love to you guys, man. I want you to like, comment, subscribe, do all that shit. I'm out!